I got a phone call from a friend asking me what it is I had done, and I didn't really know what that meant because I was homesick that day. And then I came into work the next morning at around 4.30 a.m. I went on my Twitter and saw a bunch of notifications and stuff of something I hadn't even talked about. And then I figured it out when you see the trending, because every morning I look at the, what's trending, what I can use on my show, what I can't, and there's my name spelt incorrectly. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that's how I found out. It was a shock to me. I didn't, I didn't understand why it was trending because there was nothing, I wasn't even on air the day before. So I didn't understand what had happened. So I guess that's what shocked me. I didn't know what was happening. Yeah. Have you, I mean, did you go through the tweets? I originally, when I found out I was trending, I went, I clicked on the link and I saw what was going on. But then after that, I didn't read the tweets. I didn't think I needed to read the tweets. It's too much negative energy and I don't have time for that. <laughs> you been through such a thing before? No. Um, bullying has always been something that has happened to other people to me. Um, and this was, I think, the worst form because it's people I don't know who don't know me, who've never seen me, who don't know what I'm about and just making snap judgments. And the worst part is choosing one horrible picture and then going with it. But you know, um, I've never been bullied. I never, bullying is things you read about. Other people get bullied. It was, it was very weird, yeah. So what happened next? I mean, what did you, what motions went through your head? Um, well, at first, I was confused. To be honest, I was confused. There was nothing else going through my head except confusion and then after, it was a little bit of anger, um, anger that these people don't know me. How can they make such judgments? It was not even, um, I didn't feel sorry for myself at one point because I know who I am. I know what I stand for. I know the kind of person I am. I know the things I'm self-conscious about and the things I'm not. And I'm a girl. Every girl is self-conscious about the way she looks, whether she is Giselle Bunchan or, you know, whoever else. So it was just weird that a bunch of strangers would be so critical of something they have no idea about and so it was more anger at that that I wish they would have targeted something to do with my character then at least I would understand because I was being a bitch Sawa but you know <laughs> it was just awkward yeah before we started you said you called your mom because you talked to her about it you... um I have a very strong support system and I am so blessed in that sense. I have parents who are, are supportive 100%. No matter what I decide to do, they will be there. And they, my parents, I'm 24, they still fight my battles, whether I like it or not. Um, I have uh, you know, friends and family and my sister and my brother who are amazing. And they heard about it first. And it hurt me more that they heard about it. I wish I could have told them so that they were prepared. Um, it killed me more than my mom didn't know what was going on. She just called me and she says, there's horrible things going on, what's happening? And the worst part, this isn't even on the newspaper, it's just on social media. So I didn't even know how my mother got wind of it. But yeah, she called me and um, I was hurt. I cried not because I felt personally bad. I cried because my mother felt like they were attacking her child and there's nothing she can do about it. Yeah. Are they your younger siblings, your brother and your sister, or are they older? I have a little sister and an older brother. <laughs> an older brother who was threatening to beat up everyone on the internet, which was pretty <laughs> unrealistic. But uh, my younger sister is not in the country. However, she heard about it and she called me and I had to explain to her that, you know, we're okay, nothing's happening. But I have younger cousins and younger kids that I know that look up to me and it's I didn't know how to explain that to them that if you don't look like what they think you should look like you're not good enough yeah like you said it's, mm -hmm. it's not like people don't know who started these things they know yeah so what would you like being what like what would you like to be done about it because it's not gonna stop with you yeah of course um I think, yeah, there's a group of people, everyone knows, these are the people who start these. With every single person who's been through this online, and I know they target um, random people. I guess people who are 
who put themselves out there, who put themselves in the media, in the limelight, whatever you want to call it. They target a lot of these people who have done nothing. And I think it will continue happening because we all know the people that are starting these horrible malicious rumors or whatever you want to call them. And I think unless there is some kind of, I don't know the word to use, I'm just, unless there's something that's done, I'm sure there's a board. I know the CCK can do something about it. I know there's different people out there whose job it is to parole, uh, to parole the internet and to see, because this is still hate speech. Just because it's no longer election period doesn't mean hate speech stopped. This is, it's unnecessary bullying. And this is harassment, but that's just me. I think there's more that can be done because I'm not the only one who's gone through this and I definitely will not be the last. And I don't think of myself as a victim. That's the one thing. I don't think of myself as a victim. I'm just afraid that another person will come along and hurt somebody even more and they won't be able to get out of it and feel nothing like I did. Yeah. Maybe last question. Now, we've had many people, like you said, being picked up on things that they can't change about themselves. Yeah. Maybe things that are physical, things that... Actually, it's mostly things that are physical mm -hmm. and you are one of the victims. And like you said, most of us women, even the skinniest woman, has something that she's uncomfortable with mm -hmm. in terms of her body. Are you comfortable with your body? I've always been comfortable in my body. And just like I said, when I finally responded to it, a lot of people said, don't respond to it. I felt like I had to because... Yeah. <laughs> I've never... It, it's not a secret that I'm a big girl. <laughs> I've never hidden myself. I mean, I'm doing music and I have a video out there where I'm in the video. I've, I've done tons of things in different media outlets where I'm there. So I put myself out there and I love the person I'm becoming and I'm learning to love myself slowly every single day just like any other person out there. And for me to accept myself, it took something bigger than just somebody keep telling me I'm good enough. It was me accepting that I am good enough. And so a few people taking jabs at me because they're insecure, it doesn't change how I feel about myself. And I hope that whoever else this happens to next or whoever else it has happened to will come out of this the same way. Because yes, it hurt my feelings, A, they spelled my name wrong, B, that uh, um, they were just random bullies and hiding behind faceless pseudonyms that they feel like they can't be touched. Because I know there's not one perfect person in this world. You can't tell me by talking to me like that, it makes you a bigger person. So I, I do feel bad for you if you took part in it and um, that's how you roll good for you but it, it will come back to haunt you because one day somebody will tell you these mean things you're telling other people